Yes, 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 yes. Hey guys, Gerald Peters. We're going to continue in our series of trading stocks like a pro. Now, this is not some professional presentation. Um, I'm not trying to pitch you on anything. I have some books. If you want to read those books, you can. I make my money doing this stuff, and I make my money doing real estate. To me, stocks, whether it be trading or investing, is very similar in my mind, at least to me, it's the same as flipping houses or buying and holding in houses. Um, for me, it, it, this was a seamless connection. I realize there's a lot of people and a lot of gurus that fly around in jets that'll tell you not to buy houses. It's all nonsense. Of course you should buy houses. And then those same people will tell you you shouldn't buy stocks. All nonsense. Of course you should buy stocks. Anybody telling you that the stock market is not a viable asset class for average people to get rich are just stupid people. These are people who are usually have an agenda to sell you something and they don't want you spending your money on the stock market. Okay, I said my piece on that. I won't name who those people are. You know who those people are. But let's talk about how to, if we are gonna play this game of stocks, which I love the game of stocks. Now, in all disclosure, I have a lot more money in real estate. Again, both asset classes operate seamless for me. But let me show you how the two compare. The stocks that I like to buy and trade produce cash flow. They send me a little bit of money, a little bit of drip. I need a little drip all the time. If I buy something, I want drips. I want money coming to me, even in my trades, even in my flips. I want money. I need money coming all the time because I need to pay bills. And bills don't pay themselves with speculation if I'm wrong. <laughs> so I want to get paid even if I'm wrong. So what I'm talking about is trading stocks that where maybe potentially most of the time you get paid even if you're wrong and it goes the opposite way. So if we could create a strategy like that and collect a whole bunch of drips, then we could do well. So if you bought a house to flip it, fixed it up, bought it, price goes up, kind of like a stock chart where you buy a stock and the price goes up, and then you sell said stock, very similar to buying a house and over a few months you fix it up, you sell said stock, and you make some money. Not a big difference to me. Basically the same thing. We want to buy low, sell high, right? Now, I'm not going to get into shorting and options and all of that stuff, right? But options are very similar to being like a wholesaler. And so there's a lot of correlation between, for me, between stocks and real estate. So that's what, I've never had a problem bouncing back and forth between the two assets. Matter of fact, I've had some great wins in stocks where I sold some and I bought a house. I've bought houses where I had a great win where I was able to take equity out and put it into stocks. So I've used the two asset classes to grow my net worth. In my book, The Money Flow, you can find it if you follow me on Instagram or hook up with me. Basically, this is my 18 years of trading and I put it into my strategy. This is what I do every day. I no longer look for how to trade. I have not looked at what anyone else is doing in probably over five years. I don't read articles on Seeking Alpha. I think that is the worst possible thing you could do. I don't go to Yahoo Finance. I think if you're, if you're doing these things, if you're going there, it's because you actually secretly, whether you admit it or not, don't know what you're doing or feel insecure about what you're doing. And that's okay. You just need to say this out loud. What I'd like for you to do is have a strategy where you can trade confidently. You don't need to seek the news. You don't need to see what 20, some 26 year old journalist on a website has to say. I don't care. Like this is where you need to be. This is where you need to, you don't think Warren Buffett goes to Seeking Alpha, do you? Do you think he's in his office going, let's see what they're saying on Yahoo Finance? No, he doesn't do that. He buys things that he's fairly confident and he knows how they're gonna work. So, on my book, I only print 50 at a time. And the reason being is I'm not trying to be some financial guru, but I do like talking about this stuff. So, you know, I put some out, people buy them, we conversate. Five, six months later, I've sold them all, put some out, we conversate. 
and it allows me to refine my system, like sharpening a blade. You don't need a new sword, you just need to put an edge on it. And so it's helped me explain to people by doing this, and it's actually kind of helped me internalize it. Because there's some things you begin to, if you do it long enough, you're kind of doing it intuitively. If you played golf for 20 years and you're pretty good at it, you're probably not really paying attention to every little single, you know, you probably were at first, but then as you begin to do it, a lot of things just become, you know. And so it's been a lot of fun for me to try to teach trading and show people because it's kind of like, yeah, why am I doing this, you know? And I've been able to drop some things and add some things logically through the process of teaching trading. But I believe, and if you watch my other videos, the market moves in four stages. Stage one, sideways, and this is important. This is the foundation. This is like saying if you're going to be a Christian, you got to believe in Jesus. This is the Jesus of the stock market. And no disrespect to anyone that believes in Jesus. Stage two is the breakout. Stage three is where the market tops out. And stage four is where the market breaks down. Now, all the action is happening here and here. These are the action points, stage one, stage two. Now, I'm going to show you how I discover, how I find the, for me, there's a lot of ways. And people, here's the thing. Two very smart people can disagree on where the stage is and where it starts. As long as you're consistently doing it, that's the most important thing. If you've ever played blackjack, you know, the one card that everyone disagrees on is, what do you do with a 12? Do you hit it? Or do you stay? If the dealer has a bus card and you have a 12, do you hit it or do you stay? Because if you hit that card and you get a 10, everyone's going to be pissed at you, right? But statistically, the chances are you're not going to get a 10. So whichever you do, you should do it every time. And that's part of the key to trading is trading consistently, being consistent, doing the same thing every time. And that's where financial news will get into your mind. Four things that are going to steal your money. Debt, uh, taxes, inflation, corporate marketing. And that's corporate marketing. So if we understand that the market moves in four stages and we learn to identify stage one as sideways, they call this accumulation, the theory is that when it's moving sideways, funds, mutual funds, retirement accounts, hedge funds, big traders are slowly accumulating shares. When the news gets out or something happens, it breaks out, price moves up. This is where a lot of us get in. This is actually what I'm looking for. Breakout, this is the best time for a trader to buy. Best time for a trader to buy. See, if you're a real estate investor, you don't want to go into a boring ass neighborhood where nothing's happening, nobody has a job, and it's all just crappy, crappy houses. You can't sell those houses. You need to go into a neighborhood that's going up in value. You're going to have a better chance of flipping your house and selling your house, right? That makes total, total sense. Oh, where's my time here? All right, I didn't want to go too long. But we are on YouTube, it's not Instagram. I'm used to Instagram, you only got 10 minutes. So, as a trader, we want to catch moving up markets. And if you were short team, which I'm not going to get into, you would do the opposite and catch down markets. It's a very dangerous game. I wouldn't play that game until you've been playing for a while. If you've never made money to the upside consistently, you should not be trying to make money to the downside, for the love of God. You should not be trading on margin if you can't make money with your own money. Let me stress again. If you cannot make money with your own money, you should not borrow money and try to make money. You're just going to double your pain. Okay? So it's okay to practice trading stocks. It's okay to put $500 and buy two shares and just see if this works. Buy 10 shares and when the theory work, you know, when it says take profit, sell two. And you're like, yeah, but I'm not making any money. No, but repetition is the mother of skill. There is such a thing as called practice and mastery. You're trying to master a craft, not trying to make money. If I could give advice to young people, if I could, listen to me, if you're 18, 19, 20, 25, if I could look back in my own life and do the things that I regret the most, it was not practicing skills that would make me money later, longer. Meaning I should have been practicing talking on the phone every day. Hey, sir, yeah, this is Gerald Peters. I was just giving, I should have been practicing that, practicing, practicing, practicing. But instead, I wanted to pick up the phone and make money. I should have been practicing, practicing the skills. I should have been practicing the stock market so I wouldn't have lost $7,000 when I first tried to do futures trading. I should have practiced, right? But some things you have to learn the hard way. Don't do margin until you're an expert trader. Now, I have borrowed money to trade but after trading for a very long time. Okay, so this is our religion. 
Let me make it a little cleaner. And this is the foundation of the money flow trading strategy, that markets do this. Now, you're going to say, that is not what markets do. That's not what they look like. Now, this is a clean representation, stage one, stage two, the breakout, stage three, the top, stage four, the breakdown, which goes back into a stage one. Now, you're going to say, that is not what it looks like. Let me show you what it, this is. The, this is the little juice that sometimes I explain to people, and then they get it. Okay, you ready? Let's say your great great grandfather was born here in 1920. 10. 1920, uh, his brother was born. And so this is your family lineage, people in your family. Oh, and then, so these people just keep getting born, and then you're born, and then your kids are born, and their kids are born. This is the Dow Jones Industrial or the S&P 500. The problem is, Okay, over here in the 20s, what would happen? Whoop, down. Oh, they came back up. It was up. They whoop down. It came back up. And they whoop down. Came back up. Whoop, whoop, whoop. And so it looks like that. And so inside of this up, down, up, down, what do you see? Stage one, stage one, stage one, stage one, stage three, stage three, stage three, stage three, stage three, stage three. And the stage four is what scares all the people. So, you know, 2008, stage four decline. And so if we begin to make structure out of the market, we don't have to be scared. It takes courage to be a trader. You gotta have courage, man. You gotta have courage. And so I hope that, and I'm gonna do a clean version for you. I want you to burn this into your brain. If you wanna be a successful trader, you've gotta burn this into your brain. This is the stock market over your entire life. No one can argue with me. I don't care what guru you are. I don't care if you own a yacht or a jet. The stock market has gone from here to here. I don't care who the guy is. Doesn't matter. This is what it's done. Like Google it, pull up a chart of the, go Google historical average of the S&P 500. Now your parents missed out on all of this money. Why? No courage. Maybe they just didn't know. I don't know. I don't know how you don't know. Maybe they don't know. How long have you been alive? Let's well, say you're 31 years old, you're watching this video. You've had 31 years to compound your money in the US stock market. Go look if your parents would have just put in $1,000 on the day you were born and you hadn't touched it, you reinvested all the dividends. Go look at how much money you'd have right now. It's probably more than you got in your checking account. I'm just saying. Like this is a wealth building strategy that anyone, regardless of age, race, or financial situation, anyone in America can participate in this, and yet people don't. For whatever reason, I think it's because they're stupid. Most human beings are stupid people, most of them. They're, it's not that they're not capable of being smarter, they're just walking around dead, like zombies. They're walking around asleep. They don't even see the money that's all around them. The pen, 3M, the Coors beer, the 3M makes this, the light, the electrical company that provides this, Home Depot, I bought all these boards at Home Depot. They don't see the money flow and the dividends and it's all around you. It's fucking everywhere and people don't see it because you go about your day consuming, sleeping, eating, just consuming, me, me, me. Not you, other people, I'm sure. So here's people being born Here's the market. That's the gospel. This is the gospel of trading. That the market goes up, but along the way, it goes down. Now what I do is try to buy these. Warren Buffett is one of the richest traders in the world, and Warren Buffett says what? You want to be greedy when other people are fearful and fearful when other people are greedy. Well, in order to do that, you have to have some kind of way to see where fear is. So that's what we're going to talk about. I call it the money flow. So once we understand the stages, and again, I said everyone doesn't have to agree on how to find the stages. Let me show you how I find the stages. Moving averages from the foundation to how I find stages. Well, part of it. Moving averages. Support. And resistance right there one 
and two. And so we got a fundamental faith, a belief, faith, the faith could be faith, that the market moves in four stages. Inside of the four stages, ultimately it goes up. The market goes up approximately 71% of the time. So there, we have those two foundational things we believe in. Now we have to identify it. We're going to do that with moving averages. I use a series of technically four moving averages and support and resistance, which any eight grader with a crayon can find support and resistance. And so we have a very simple idea, we have a very simple strategy. Anyone can do this, regardless of age, race, find situation. If you have a phone, you can play this game. Now there's a lot of ways to use this system, but I'm gonna show you. So you can modify the system to work how you want, much like in real estate. In real estate, you could buy a house, right? You could find one at a good deal, you could wholesale that house. That's one way to make money in real estate, right? Wholesaling. Uh, what else could you do? You could flip it. It's all, that's all within real estate, right? You could buy and hold it. You could do what I do where I buy a house, I fix it myself, I spend three to four months, I do everything except plumbing and electrical, which gives me sweat equity, right? <laughs> Almost put sweet equity, <laughs> I don't know how sweet it is. <laughs> sweat equity. So when I finish a house, because I did a lot of the work myself, I don't have a job, I, I do money for a living. My job every day is to wake up and allocate my money to the best way that'll bring in cash flow to my family. And so we have investments in the stock market, we have investments in the real estate market, and we have to manage these investments. Some people would call that a dream life, financial freedom. That's really what I'm trying to teach you here. That's what I teach in my free ebook, You Don't Have to Die Broke, completely free, where I share my story. The only thing I charge for is if you want me to ship it to you, then I'm gonna charge you a few bucks. Now my trading strategy, I do charge a few bucks, but I'm teaching it right here for free. So sweat equity in my house, now, what could I do? I could sit on this house for, say, six months. So I got sweat equity in it. I bought it for a good deal. I've got a renter in it. Now I've got cash flow. What could I do? I could go to the bank and what? Pull out some money? Pull out some equity? Take that to buy another one. That idea works in the stock market, too. Not quite the same, but logistically very similar. And I'm going to show you the the way this system works, and then you can modify it based on whether you're trading, i.e. flipping, or if you're investing. So as I watch a stock move, and this is gonna be my third grade rendition of a stock moving, okay? It's kinda of hard to draw a stock chart. And we have the idea, there's four stages, and we have the idea that uh, markets move in these stages. We believe that. We have faith in that. You have to to make this strategy work. And we believe that over time, markets always go up. Approximately 71% of the time, markets go up. So I come to an area that I know a lot about, fixed income. Why? Because I trade in real estate. A lot of the fixed income is based around mortgage-backed securities, around utility stocks, electrical companies. I deal with them all the time to do my real estate. Uh, it, 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 uh, so a lot of the these things... So I trade a fund called AGNC. You may have heard of it, it's a very popular fund. Not a fund, this is a, it's technically a stock. It's actually a mortgage-backed security. Let's, let's not sound like too much like a dumbass. It's an MBS, mortgage-backed security. If you go to, uh, I just did a live on Instagram where I was talking about what a mortgage-backed security is. In other words, these guys borrow money at the short term, they buy mortgage-backed securities, you could Google what that is. Anyway, this fund pays 12% dividend yield pays a 12% dividend yield. I like to buy it down here. Does that make sense? I mean, if you were just looking at this stock chart, does it make sense to you to buy it low? Makes sense. Would it make sense to you to maybe sell some up here if we were trading it? We're talking trading now, we're not talking about investing. So that makes sense, right? And so maybe there's a way we could do that. What if we could find these points? How cool would that be? That'd be like a money machine. And what if inside of the thing that we're trading here, A, G, and C, it paid us to play this game? And it does. It pays a monthly dividend. Right? I do this for a couple different stocks.